Hey, Dr. Christensen here. I wrote recently about T3 and about how it's important to have enough, not too much, and someone wrote in with a really good question. The question was basically, they were told their functional doctor said that they have a pituitary problem that's making their T3 low. And even though I warned about a T low TSH being a bad thing, that didn't apply to this person according to their doctor because of their pituitary being the real cause of their thyroid disease. And the writer was asking, hey, should they ignore their TSH and take T3 because of their pituitary problem? So really good question. Thank you for writing in about that. This is a really common misunderstanding. I've trained doctors in America and Mexico, and I've seen this same mistake made so many times. So the short answer is, it's extremely rare that the pituitary is the culprit in situations like this, but here's how some, some ways you may know if that's likely or not. Here's why it can look like that with low TSH and low levels of T3 with a healthy pituitary. So let's back up a bit. So how, does the, how could a pituitary cause thyroid disease? Well, when your whole endocrine system is working properly, the hypothalamus tells the pituitary to work, and the pituitary tells the thyroid to work. It also would tell the adrenals, the ovaries, or testicles to do their jobs as well. And if the pituitary didn't tell them to work, they wouldn't do anything, even if they could, even if they were perfectly healthy. And if the hypothalamus didn't tell the pituitary to work, same thing would happen. And I've also heard many doctors say, hey, this is a hypothalamic problem. Well, they call when the pituitary or the hypothalamus is goofing up, they call that central hypothyroidism. And that's to just differentiate from primary hypothyroidism. So primary hypothyroidism, the thyroid isn't working because the thyroid can't work. It's the primary problem. Central hypothyroidism, the thyroid's not working because no one's telling it to work. And they break those down into secondary and tertiary. So secondary would be the pituitary failing to tell the thyroid to work. And that's what your doctor said is going on. Tertiary would be where the hypothalamus doesn't tell the pituitary to tell the thyroid to work. So how common are these things? Well, amongst reported cases of hypothyroidism, about one case per every 80,000 to 120,000 is caused by pituitary disease. So it's really, really rare. Now, tertiary disease, where the hypothalamus is a culprit, that's only about a couple of dozen cases ever globally. So that's exceedingly rare. What causes those things? The most common problem is a tumor on the pituitary. And <clears throat> those are called space-occupying lesions. They're lesions that take up space, and they do one of two things. They crush it so it can't work, it's just squeezed into oblivion, or they grow extra cells, and those cells make too many signals that tell the other glands to work too much. So by and large, pituitary disease is all on or all off for all glands. So there's a lot of things off in really big ways. It's not just the thyroid. It's the adrenals, the ovaries, or the testicles. Everything is, as a group, radically overperforming or radically underperforming. <clears throat> and it is not subtle. Now, the other thing about pituitary disease is that if there's a growth, if there's an adenoma, that's called a microadenoma or a macroadenoma. A microadenoma is one that's tiny, less than about 14 millimeters. A macroadenoma is a big one, so more than 14 millimeters. In general, macroadenomas, those are the ones that cause big hormonal changes to the thyroid or elsewhere. They also tend to be large enough to squeeze on the nerves that go from your eyes back to your optic processing centers in the occiput of your brain. So your vision gets distorted as well. So if your vision is distorted and all of your hormones are way off, it could be pituitary disease. It does happen. It's rare, but it does happen. But much more commonly, doctors will look at lab results that have a low TSH and a low T3, and they assume the pituitary is not working. The thought process, they think that if the pituitary was working right, that a low TSH would correspond with a high T3. Let me explain that. So 
the thyroid is being told to work by TSH. So if it's overactive, the pituitary lowers TSH on purpose. So a lot of doctors would look at a lab report that has a low T3 and a low TSH and scratch their heads and say, well, if there's too little T3, why wouldn't the pituitary tell the thyroid to work harder? That makes no sense. They assume the pituitary is to blame. There's a slide that goes with this blog post, and I'd love for you to take a close look at that slide because I think it helps to illustrate this point. So I generated this out of 52 different results from thyroid tests, and these show how the TSH, the free T3, the free T4, and the reverse T3, how they tend to move together. And what happens is the first step is your pituitary telling your body you want more or less thyroid hormone. And specifically, it's telling the thyroid whether or not it should get bigger or get smaller. That's what's going on. And when there's too much hormone, the pituitary lowers the TSH. And that's what we've got over on the right side of that slide, that light blue line going down. When there's too little thyroid hormone, the pituitary yells at the thyroid via more TSH. That's the left side with that blue line going up. But there's a couple of curious things. So where you might be on that left side, there's a spot where if you look at that dark line for the free T3, it doesn't go up in a straight line as the TSH goes down. It actually dips and then creeps up again. So what's happening with that dip? Well, your brain tells your thyroid how much hormone it wants out of it, but the rest of your body does its best to make do out of the wrong amount of thyroid hormone. So when you're getting off, but you're not at the ultimate extremes, you may see these things not line up. So in a scenario like where you may be or where someone is on this graph, at about 0.1 on the TSH, the T3 is dropped. And what's going on is your brain is telling your thyroid, hey, you're making too much, slow down. And your liver, your gut, your kidneys, they're bailing out all this extra thyroid hormone. That makes the T3 lower. So your body's peripheral metabolism and peripheral regulation is helping out your pituitary. The same thing can happen on the opposite end. People can be getting hypothyroid and they can actually have higher levels, especially of T3. And the opposite is going on. There's too little hormone, so the body is holding on to every speck. And it might do that in a clumsy way to where there's more than is ideal. So it's actually really common when someone's getting too much thyroid medication or their body's overproducing thyroid to where they actually have lower levels of these hormones. And it's not the pituitary broken in 99,999 99, cases out of 100,000. It's not a problem with the pituitary. It's a completely normal response. It's hyperthyroidism from someone making too much if they've got graves or just taking too much. And sadly, many doctors not understanding that will want to just give more thyroid hormone. And if they do, eventually the free T3 will go up. But sadly, that'll only happen after the TSH has gone very low. And that's not safe. That's a thyroid overdose. And there's no way around the risks to your heart, your brain, and your bones. And I don't want that. So please do know that if you're ever in a situation like this, that pituitary disease is almost never the culprit. It can be, but you would think about that with a doctor who does specialize in evaluating endocrine diseases. The best ones are those that are trained in endocrinology and also natural medicine. The naturopathic ones that focus in endocrinology are the best fits. But a thorough diagnosis would involve a scan of your pituitary and also an evaluation of all the pituitary hormones, not just the TSH, but also FSH, LH, and ACTH. If a doctor doesn't look that thoroughly, they cannot diagnose it as a pituitary problem and they cannot ignore your TSH. So hope that was useful. <laughs> Take great care. We'll talk more really soon. Bye-bye.